Greetings everyone, P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to day one of my favorite albums to listen to in the summertime. Those summertime albums. Albums you play when the sun is shining, weather's getting hot, maybe you're driving around, you got a car with a moonroof or a convertible, you got the windows down, you're cranking up the stereo, maybe you're out back by the pool, maybe you're flipping burgers or throwing some chicken wings or ribs on the grill. Maybe you got family and friends out playing volleyball. Those albums that you crank when you got people over or when you're just hanging by yourself, sitting out, maybe you got a hammock, got a cold drink, and you put on your favorite summertime record that just kind of gets you in the mood for that kind of weather. That's what we're talking about here this month. Again, these may or may not be some of our favorite albums, but we know when we really like to hear them really like to hear them in the summertime, preferably outside, right? Albums you play outside. Today, for my pick number one, this particular album, day number one, it's not really pick number one, there's no real order here, it's just these are going to be 31 of my favorite albums to listen to in the hot weather in the summertime. This was released May 12th, 1972, recorded at various places, Olympic Studios in London, Star Groves in East Woodhay, Nell Cott, using the Rolling Stones mobile Sunset Sound in Los Angeles, produced by Jimmy Miller for Rolling Stones Records. I'm talking about Exile on Main Street. That's right. The album that I pushed away for decade after decade. You know, like I've said, I've told this story before. I, when I was a kid growing up, I hated the Stones. Hated them. Young Pete Pardo, young hard rock metalhead. I don't know, for whatever reason, the Stones just bugged me. I just could not get into them. I just ignored them or just was like, ah, yeah, don't like them at all. Went to see them in 89 on the Steel Wheels tour at uh, Shea Stadium in New York City. Well, in Queens, New York. Um, I just went to go. I kind of, I had a good time. I got really drunk. I had a really good time. It wasn't until about like maybe five years later that uh, like the mid-90s that all of a sudden I discovered after listening to like all the sticky fingers all the way through i was kind of like hmm i think i kind of like this let me listen to more you know some girls beggar's banquet let it bleed it's only rock and roll i decided to start listening to all these other albums and i figured you know I kind of am at a point in my life where i don't really mind this anymore in fact i'm really enjoying these rolling stones guys but there's some at the time there was something about Exile on Main Street that I was like, yeah, I'm not sure if I really get this album. I'm kind of liking all the other ones, but this one is kind of bluesy. There's a lot of kind of like uh, country rock and acoustic stuff, and it's just I don't know. It's long, a lot of songs. It's, it sounds really druggy, and I just uh, you know I just kind of fought this one, but I was liking everything else. And then, like, maybe, oh, I don't know, in the early 2000s, like, maybe five, eight years later, something like that, uh, on one of the various reissues, uh, I think I saw a documentary on it. And then I read a book about this time period in the Stones' history when they were over there in France and they were over recording this album and on Exile or in Exile and everything going on with it. And this, it kind of took on, like, a new meaning a uh, new kind of mythology appeared to me in my brain. And all of a sudden, this became a fascinating period in the history of the Rolling Stones. For me, for someone who was still sort of a Rolling Stones newbie, right? You know, I, you know, I knew a lot of their songs for years and years and years since I was a kid. But as a fan, I guess. And then all of a sudden, uh, this album took on new life for me. And it became this, this, this album became like a listen to outside by the pool album. I don't know why, why specifically that scenario or that situation, right? Something about this album recorded at Nelcote and, you know, all the people coming and going and all the heroin and the drinking and the various musicians and Graham Parsons and uh, all this stuff, right? And I, I became kind of fascinated with this album and the whole kind of mysterious quality of it and every, the fact that they even got an album done during, during this time period 
while they were out there in tax exile and all the drugs and everything going on. So, I don't know. But, of course, you know, the uh, lineup here for the album, Mick Jagger, of course, on vocals, harmonica, little bits of guitar, Keith Richards, guitars, lead and backing vocals, bass, Mick Taylor, guitars, bass guitar, backing vocals, Bill Wyman, bass guitar, Charlie Watts, drums, and then, then everybody else, right? Nicky Hopkins on piano, Bobby Keys on sax, Jim Price, trumpet, trombone, Ian Stewart, piano, Jimmy Miller doing some percussion, odd, other odd things, Bill Plummer, bass, Billy Preston, keyboards, Al Perkins, pedal steel, Richard Washington, marimba, Vanetta, Vanetta Fields, Clyde King backing vocals, Joey Green backing vocals, Jerry Kirkland backing vocals, Shirley Goodman, Tammy Lynn, Mac Rebenack backing vocals, Kathy McDonald backing vocals, all sorts of people taking taking their turn, helping out on this album, which seems to take forever, but yet really probably didn't take all that long compared to other albums, right? So what's on this uh, kind of loose, kind of summertime sprawling type of thing rocks off kicks it off there's some good rockers on here too rocks off rip this joint right right off the bat rip this joint is lots of fun shake your hips casino boogie of course the great tumbling dice side one really strong side two sweet virginia right then you got all of a sudden all these kind of like country rock type of things these bluesy country rock tunes just start popping up all out all over the place torn and frayed sweet black angel love and cup Love and Cup is so good. Love Love and Cup. Uh, then, of course, you got Happy. One of my favorite Keith Richards songs. Happy is great. Really good. Turd on the Run, Ventilator Blues, I Just Want to See His Face, Let It Loose. And then, you know, over on side four, All Down the Line. That's such a great, that's a great summertime song right there. That's just a, yeah, crank it in the car, drive around, make sure everybody hears it. Stop Breaking Down, Shine a Light, another great track, Soul Survivor. So much good stuff on here. You know, of course, you get the deluxe edition. You got all sorts of extra tracks and whatnot. But uh, any way you look at it, this is a uh, really fun album. And like I said, just one that took a long time to really resonate with me. And again, I don't know why I tend to, if I'm going to listen to this album, it's usually playing it on my CD boombox or on the iPod through some kind of streaming thing, out on the deck by the pool. Very rarely, in fact, I don't think I've ever played this in the gym. I don't think I've ever played this just at night chilling. I don't think I've ever played this, you know, cooking dinner in the kitchen. This is an outdoors type of an album for me, always. Don't know why. And it's the, you know, some girls I do sometimes play outdoors in the summertime, but generally speaking, when I want to put a Rolling Stones album on outside during the summer, whether it's just me or whether I got people over, I put this one on. You know, because some people like that whole outside thing, you know, maybe like a, the, the the days winding down a little bit, maybe you got a little fire in the fire pit going. There's something about the kind of more acoustic nature of some of these tracks really resonates with people. I don't know. Resonates with me. So that's my pick for today. Pick number one, day number one, Exile on Main Street from the Rolling Stones. Let us know what you think, if you care to, of Exile on Main Street down in the... Uh, Comments below, as well as your picked for today. Day one, summertime albums, list it below. We'll see you tomorrow. I can't believe it. Day one, I went over eight minutes on this video. That's did not extend to nine. By the time I'm done, it'll be over nine. Usually, I try to make these about like five, six minutes. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a long album, right? It's a double album. Lots to talk about. Anyway, thanks for watching. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as a post. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page, our channel donations, our merch page, and our Cameo page. Thank you in advance for all your support there. And we'll see you soon here with more stuff. I'm B. Pardo. Day two tomorrow. Stay tuned for another one. Got uh, In the Proxy coming up tomorrow. We got Thursday. Uh, Thursday? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, Wednesday is uh, What's Hot with C. Tranquility Day. New album reviews. Should have a few for you this week. Friday, of course. Friday morning, a fun house with Martin Popoff. Professor's Picks on Friday. Saturday's the review crew. Sunday, ranking the albums. Grant Arthur and myself ranking the solo albums of Dennis DeYoung, formerly of Styx. So that's all coming up this week and other things. So uh, stay tuned. Like I said, I'm also going to bring you, hopefully this week too, that uh, 
who's the more influential guitar player, Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen. That should be coming up as well this week. So uh, lots happening. Stay tuned for all of it. I am P. Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow morning for day two. Summertime albums. It's July. See you then. Bye-bye.